everyone, I'm Josh Green and I teach paint. Cleaning oil brushes. Here's everything you need to know to clean oil brushes in an eco-friendly and health safe way. Oil brush cleaning has two parts. One, the removal of excess oils from the brush. Two, the restoration of the brush hairs. I'm going to show you two ways to do the first step, the removal of excess paint from the brush. It can be done either with a solvent or oils. Beyond that, the brush restoration is exactly the same for both methods. For method one, using a solvent to remove excess oil, you will need a citrus base thinner, a jar with a metal coil, paper towels, biodegradable or reusable gloves, a Ziploc bag, a ceramic bowl, and a sink. For method two, the removal of excess oil paint with oils, you will need linseed oil, paper towels, a bar of soap, a ceramic bowl, and a sink. Now for the first method of removing excess oil paint from the brush with a solvent. Open your citrus base thinner and pour it into the glass jar with the metal coil. So this method is best for getting a deep clean. Here I have the jar with the citrus based solvent. I removed the coil so you can watch the paint dissolve. I'm just going to dab that brush into the solvent getting it deep in the brush hairs. Notice that I'm wearing a reusable glove on my hand that will be directly touching the solvent and the oil paint. I'm folding and pinching the paper towel on the end of the brush to squeeze out all the excess paint. And we just want to repeat this process so all that excess paint is removed. Now for method two of removing excess oil paint with oils. This is the most health safe method of removing excess oil paint and it works best for lightly used brushes. So I'm just pouring a little bit of that linseed oil into a dish and I'm going to dab my paintbrush in that dish, diluting all the paint so it'll be easy to wipe out. Notice that I'm wearing a reusable glove on my hand that'll be directly touching the paint. I'm folding the paper towel and pitching out the paint. I want to do this till it's clean. Now we can proceed to stage two. This is restoring the brush. In this step, we have removed all the excess oil paint from the brush hairs and now we want to restore the brush hairs and its form back to working condition. To do this, we will need paper towels, soap, and water. There are two types of soap. There are liquid soaps and there are solid soaps. I don't recommend liquid soaps. There's a lot of artists that do use them, but a solid soap is dense and you can rub it through the hairs of the brush and squeeze out the paint. Here's our bar of soap a ceramic bowl with just a little bit of water, and plenty of paper towels. This step is very important from letting any of the chemicals go down the drain. So we want to wet that bar of soap and then rub the brush hairs right into it, getting that solid soap deep into the brush. And now we want to pinch out that excess soap into the paper towel. Now before you move to the sink, wipe out the ceramic bowl, removing all excess paint. So far, no excess paint will enter the water system through the sink. It all will go into a Ziploc bag and be thrown away responsibly. Just to be thorough, we can do one more washing in the sink with our bar of soap. All paint has been removed, so it's safe to wash in the sink now. So now we're just going to dab that brush onto the paper towel and let it absorb all the water from the brush hairs. It's really important that the brush is dry by the end of the cream. Now we're just going to tear little tiny strips to wrap around the ends of the brush to help restore the shape of the hairs. This will also prevent fraying of the brush hairs and this will extend the brush's life for several months to a year. Okay, get ready. Oh. 
Yes. We're going to spit on our hands and rub that into the brush hairs. The spit dries hard, restoring the shape of the brush. This is a very important step that will extend the life of your brushes. So once you've finished cleaning your brushes and they're dry, you never want to leave your brushes standing vertically. It'll collect water in the furl. It'll mold and break down the glue. It's always best to lay them flat or to hang them downward. So another very important part of brush cleaning is what do we do with the soiled rags left over? Now, when oil paint is drying, it heats up. So a rag with drying oil paint and solvents on it can spontaneously combust. It's very important to do this next step to prevent this from happening. Let's gather all the paper towels from that day's painting session and from today's cleaning and we're going to put them inside a Ziploc bag. Now let's take that bag to the sink. We're just going to drip in a little bit of water. Now let's squeeze that water through the paper towels and seal the top of the bag. Okay, let's take that bag outside to an outdoor trash can or dumpster and dispose of it. Now I would like to give you the evidence to support these two brush cleaning methods. And I'd like to also give you a well-rounded understanding of oil brush cleaning. Like I said, oil brush cleaning happens in two parts, the removal of excess paint and the restoration of the brush hairs. Just like in the demos, there's two ways to do the first step. So let's cover solvents now. The binder of oil paint is linseed oil. Linseed oil is made from pressed or boiled flax seeds. Here is a molecule of linseed oil. It has three long tails coming out from a head. The tails of these molecules tangle together to form a dense net that when dry makes a solid film. Solvents are a chemical that dissolve a substance. In this case, we are dissolving the tails of the linseed oil molecule. Here you can see I'm dipping the dirty brush into the solvent and the oil paint is just falling off into smaller particles. There are five types of solvents in oil paint. There are turpentines, terpenoids, mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits, and citrus based thinners. All solvents are incredibly toxic. We want to not get these on our skin, in our eyes, or ingest them at all. We do not want to breathe the vapors. Do not stand over an open jar. When we work with it in the studio, we want to keep it in a jar with a lid. I see this so many times in our schools and in studios that someone is working with an open jar of mineral spirits. This is dangerous because long-term exposure to these vapors can lead to disease for your lungs and your skin. Turpentines are a tree resin distillate. They have a fast evaporation rate, releasing harmful vapors into the air. They also absorb through the skin. Turpentines are the old school solvent that the old masters used. It was used in traditional glazing and to make varnishes. Maybe if you're into art historical methods of painting, it might be worth getting some refined turpentine, but I do not recommend it. It is way too toxic to use in the studio. Terpenoid is turpentine, but the harmful aromatic chemicals have been removed from it. It's still toxic, but it's slightly safer. I do not recommend it for an art practice. Mineral spirits are petroleum-based distillates. They release harmful vapors that affect the ozone. They're also petroleum-based, which is hard on the environment. They have a slower evaporation rate, releasing less of the harmful vapors into the air. They also absorb less to the skin. These are the modern solvents, but I still do not recommend them. 
Odorless mineral spirits is mineral spirits, but the harmful aromatic chemicals have been removed from it. It's still toxic, and I do not recommend it. My recommendation is citrus-based thinners. These are made from orange peels distilled down. They are safe for the environment, they do not affect the ozone layer, and they are very health safe, but they still have risks. And they smell nice. A plus about them are they are as strong as turpentine and they can be used for traditional glazing and to make varnishes. With them around, I see no reason why to ever use turpentine. Now let's talk about cleaning excess paint with oils. The old masters use linseed and walnut oil. Instead of breaking down the oil, we're adding more oil to the paint to dilute it and make it easy to wipe out. I recommend using linseed oil. It's the simplest, most straightforward way, and it does a relatively good job. Other common oils used to clean brushes are safflower oil and spike oil of lavender, also known as lavender oil or spike oil. I do not recommend spike oil because of its intense aroma. Another popular choice that I see a lot in New York is Murphy's oil. Always, always, always avoid cooking oils and non-drying oils. You do not want to clean your brushes with these because your paintings will never dry. Always avoid olive oil, coconut oil, corn oil, wesson oil, and baby oil. Other tricks you might encounter are some artists will put their dirty brushes inside a jar of oil to keep them from drying. I've seen a lot of artists do this and I do not recommend it. It's not good for the long term health of the brush. Always clean your brushes immediately after use. Other health concerns are touching the paint. Is it okay to touch paint? Well, with oil paints, the oils are not dangerous. What's dangerous is the pigments. Not every pigment is dangerous, specifically the heavy metals. We're talking about leads, cadmiums, cobalts, chromium, etc. We do not want to touch these paints. It's okay if you do, because these pigments are bound up in the oil. We don't want them to sit on the skin for long periods of time. This is when it gets dangerous. If the paint is on your skin, like a cadmium, and it's there for a long period of time, some of the metal can leach into the skin, getting into the bloodstream. These pigments are mainly dangerous in their powderized form. If you make your own paint, it's extremely dangerous. The dust can get in the air. The only other time it's dangerous is when you're sanding a painting, turning it back into dust. But when it's in paint, it's pretty safe. But just to be safe, wear your gloves. If it gets on you, wash it off. It's not a big deal. For those people who are scared of heavy metals, Gamblin makes a very health safe cadmium. Okay, it's a very stable cadmium and it does not leach into the skin. I felt like this was a very important video to make. I did a lot of research on these topics and I've been cleaning brushes for many years now. I believe that this is the most health safe and eco-friendly way to clean a brush. If you don't want any health risks, just clean with oils only. And the steps with the ceramic bowl and the Ziploc bag ensure that no heavy metals or chemicals go back into the environment. If you follow these steps, you'll be doing really great things for you and the environment. I hope this was helpful and improved your practice. Uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to my videos. Thanks.